when we last left off yesterday, we were we had just finished coding the getting get unvisited neighbors, and today we're going to continue by looking at this get lowest unvisited neighbor. I have provided the skeleton of this method, and what I need you to do now is to turn off this video and think about what goes in these question marks here to finish out this method. And then after we're done with that, then we'll write the actual Dijkstra method ourselves. Okay, I'm gonna show you the answer now. Here we go. So when we find the lowest item, we want to set the index to be the I, which we have found, and the weight is gonna be stored in our matrix. So we need to go matrix node, and the other one is going to be unvisited get sub i like that and now we need to set up the for loop and the if statement is going to check to see if the weight that we have is less than the lowest weight we've calculated so far so the weights are stored in the matrix so we need to use the matrix if the weight in the matrix is less than the lowest yeah okay so there you go so that is basically the guts of the get lowest unvisited neighbor method. And you can see that this double indirection probably cost me a lot of students last few years, uh, but we have that now. Okay, let's get back together now. We're gonna code the Dijkstra algorithm now, which is the main algorithm, the main method for, for, for calculating Dijkstra. And to do that, we're gonna sort of follow along from the video and we know that we need these two lists. So one list is the shortest distance list, and the other one is the previous vertex list. So let's start off our Dijkstra algorithm by setting up those two lists. So right in here. Now, if you wanted to, you could probably make these attributes of the class also. The reason why I chose not to do so is that this is the only method that uses them. So I decided to just keep them as local variables. You could make them attributes of the class. I don't think there's anything good or bad about that. And I call the first one distances. And this distances refers to this shortest distance. I should probably call it shortest distance or something, but I called it distances. Uh, and this is, of course, going to be an array list. Okay. Why array list? Because I just decided to use array lists everywhere in this project just because. They're easy to print, they're easier to deal with than the arrays, so I've used array lists. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a similar list for the previous vertex. So we want to create a list for this vertex, for this uh, list right here, this previous vertex list. So let's do that, like that. So we have a good start here, and what we're gonna do now is we're going to, we're going to start off our algorithm and we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna initialize these lists now. So I'm gonna go for uh, int i equals zero, i is less than node, uh, this dot node count. That was an attribute I set up when I set up the matrix. Uh, that's just the length of the rows. Uh, and over here, uh, plus plus i. And now what I want to do is set all these distances to be, uh, I want to set all, all of these distances here to be infinite. Uh, eventually I'll take the starting node and set that to be zero. But for now, I wanna set all of these to be infinite. And I want to set the previous vertex to be the starting vertex. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say uh, distance, I used integer.max value here to represent infinity in my little lists here, but you can use negative one also. I used integer.max value because I'm gonna do a comparison and it, it's just easier that I don't have to check for minus one. I can just look at this as a big number. So that was just convenient there. And the other one is uh, I'm gonna set this uh, previous uh, to be whatever the starting whatever the starting node is. So basically what I've done here, referencing this picture right here, I've set everything to be the starting node. Usually that's A, but it might not be. And I've set all these up to be infinite here, okay? Now you notice that at the beginning of the algorithm, we have to take whatever our starting node is and set that to be zero distance so that we pick that one first in the algorithm. That's 
part of what the guy said when he described the algorithm. So we're going to do that right now. So uh, after we've initialized those two lists, what we're going to do is we're going to set the distance to the start vertex to be zero. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go distances dot set. Okay, so it should be starting node and zero. Now, in our example, it's most often we're going to start with node A, but they may want to start at another node. You don't know. So looking over here now, what I've done is I've set this zero right here like that. That's what I've done so far. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, I'm going to mark that starting node as visited. So mark starting node as visited. That's part of our algorithm. Okay, there you go. I marked the starting node as visited. This is a debugging statement that you'll find useful as you traverse the algorithm. We can turn this off later. And now we're going to get to the main. So we're set up to start Dijkstra now. This was all just prep work to prime all the lists and set up to start with the starting node and all that. We're now re we're ready to start Dijkstra proper. So now what I'm going to say is while there remain some unvisited nodes and we're going to say in current equals starting node and then we're going to have a while try to figure out what goes in there and then i'm going to say there's going to be a for each neighbor this is the heart of dijkstra right here now i'm going to give you a stab at coding this but I'm going to give you some hints by showing you what we do after we're all done. And that's it. You can see why using the array list is convenient because they know how to print themselves here. So that's all we do. To code this extra now from what I've given you so far. Look, I've even given you these huge hints here in the comments. And they're here. Look, look over here. This tells you. Let me let me move this comment here, make it clear. That goes over there like that. So I'm not sure you'll get all of it. Maybe, hopefully, some of you will. But try and try and code this this core of the Dijkstra algorithm right here in the next 20, 25 minutes. And if you want to take a whack at it, go ahead and run it. And um, if you if you want to know how it's going to be working or not, we're just going to go over to AutoGrader here. So let me show you how you would run this thing. And you just go to Dijkstra here, and you just copy this input, and you just do a Control C. And then you come over here and you run this main method and then you just paste it in and you go and you should see this output right here. This is the output you should see if you've coded the algorithm correctly. Okay, so that's how you'll know you got it right or not. I need to give you one more hint here. When you calculate the new distance from the current node to the neighbor, remember it costs something to get from the starting node to the current node also. You got to add that in too. Remember that, right? Remember that. So let me just show you on the video here. If you're trying to calculate how much it costs to go from B to C, you also need to include how much it costs for you to get to B in the first place, right? So here, the cost to get to B would be three. So the cost to get to C from B would be eight, not five, because you got to go from here to here to here and then there. So you got to include that previous cost also. But you have that saved in your list, so you can use that. That's what the lists are for. Okay, first hint coming out. What goes inside the while here? Okay, there you go. So that's the first hint now. While all visited is still false, we want to keep going. How do I mark the current node visited? Okay, was visited current. Okay, so there's that. And then how do I update the current node? There you go. So that part's all finished. So now you just have to code the bulk of the while the for loop. Uh, you will find it extremely valuable to put these two debugging print statements into your code so that when you are running it and debugging it, you can see the algorithm as it progresses. So these are really helpful debugging statements to have. We can turn these off later when we get the final results, but this is good for now. So now all we have left to do is code the for loop. And 
what, what I need to do for this for loop is I need to go and look at each neighbor in the list of unvisited neighbors. I can actually do this with a for each loop. And what I want to know is what should be over here? Okay, Mr. Emrani. Okay, so there you go. So that's what should be there. And now we need to calculate this new distance. How much does it cost to get to the current node that we're at? If you're not sure what the answer to that is, that's basically these distances here. So I just need to look at the current at the, at the list, the, the distance list and calculate how much does it cost for me to get to here. Okay, that's how much it costs to get to the current. And now I want to calculate how much more it's going to cost from the matrix to get from where I am now to this other neighbor that I'm examining. So, so I have a for each loop. Okay. You could use you could use the get I if you used a regular for loop, but I don't have to do that because I used a for each loop to make it much simpler. And so now if the new distance is bigger than the old distance, and now what I need to know is what goes over here now. I'm comparing it to the to the numbers in here now, comparing it to the number for the other node in here in the same distance list. So it's going to be distances dot get. So that's my distance. And now if I found a shorter one, I need to relax the node. I need to relax the node. So I need to update the distances list and the previous list. Okay. Uh, I think we're basically finished at this point. Now, the code in theory at least matches what I've written in my working copy next, that's sitting next to me. Well, let's give it a try. First, let's run it. Uh, I need to go back to my project here and I need to do a copy. So I need to do a control C to copy it into the clipboard. And then let's go over here and run this puppy. And now I'm going to try and paste that input into here. And let's run it. Oh, have I not called it? Oh, you're right, sir. Thank you for letting me know that. Let's try it again. And looking at these two right here, uh, 0355 1189 and then 0001225. Let's see what the right answers are. Looks like it's working.